sweetest song I've ever seen Rising from the African plain It's a song of the forgiven Drowning out the Amazon rain The song of Asian believers Filled with God's holy fire It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation A love song born of a great voice God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, let it rise above the forest, caught up in the heavens. Praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered on the ground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings true. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, and all the powers of darkness tremble at once. All the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. God's children sing out glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, when all God's children sing out glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, all God's people sing in glory, glory. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the, time. God is good. the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's take a quiet, reflective moment. Let's bow our heads and silently confess our personal sinfulness to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But we are heartily sorry for it and we sincerely repent of it. And we pray that of your boundless mercy you would forgive us for the sake of and in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's in his name we pray this. Amen.
upon a true confa- a confession of our heart to God, I announce the grace of God to all of you. I tell you, he forgives you all of your sins. He calls you sons and daughters. He declares you righteous in his powerful name. That is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess Friday, Friday, I was leaving work, uh, going down this little road that leads to where, where the plant is, and I looked down just before the stop sign, and I saw a wallet and credit cards and stuff on the road, like it's been run over a couple of times. So, I got out, I picked it up, went to see how much money was in there. <laughs> um, no, uh, and then, you know, immediately I was like really feeling bad for this guy, whoever it is, and he's from Minnesota, and it's a license, and, and I, uh, his name was uh, uh, Terry Malford, Terry Malford, and uh, so uh, finally, in his wallet, I found a, a card with his name on it and a number, I called the number, I got voicemail, you know, hey, uh, you know, I, I found your wallet, my name, my number, good, and I'm thinking, this is probably one of the construction workers, engineers on one of the, you know, jobs on the plant, I'll call those foremen. So I did that. I made some phone calls. I said, yes, Terry's one of mine. Uh, you bring, bring his wallet over to the trailer, and I'll give it, get it to him. I said, this is great, you know. Did that, and uh, everything was cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm driving down the road, and I proceeded to go home, and uh, the guy, Terry, calls me. And he says, uh, he says, Scott, I just... I want to thank you for doing this for me. This is really nice of you to take your time and stop and do this and pick up and find my wallet and call me. I can't believe you do something like that. And don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's, you know, it was the right thing to do. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no, no. I really appreciate it. I got to go back to Minnesota this week. I would never get on the plane. I said, no, no sweat, but I was glad to do it. He goes, so when are we going to get together so you can give my wallet back? I said, um, you know, this is about 45 minutes later, you know. And I said, I said, no, no, no. I said, the foreman's got it. The foreman's got it, and he, he's going to give it to you. you know, what foreman? I ain't got no foreman. <laughs> I don't work at that plant or nothing like that. I said, oh, no. I said, okay, hold on. <laughs> so then I made some more phone, phone calls. I called the guy. It turns out there's the guy that worked at the plant. His name was Terry, like, Manfield. It was the Manford Manfield. It was really close names, and, and the, they realized it, and they waited and get, got his wallet back to him. And again, so this guy calls me back, and he's still he's just very very thankful. <laughs> you know, um, us people of God, you know, if there's a story in the, in Scripture about how rejoiceful a woman was when she found her coin, you know, and and uh, you know us us people of God, we we really 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 have a lot to be thankful for. God gave His Son for us and, and saved us. We are now chosen. We are His people, and we have the privilege. We have the privilege of uh, being able to gather here together and worship him. Amen? Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his Make his 
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, and within you, He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you.
morning church. <laughs> uh, our first reading is from the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet, you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he is considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This concludes the first reading. Good morning, church. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. The reading today is from Paul's letter to the people at Philippi. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked, and twisted generation, among whom 
you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should be glad and rejoice with me. Thus ends the second reading. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, the 23rd through 27th verses. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven... He will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now let us one and all confess our faith in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit through the recitation of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Do you guys go to church? Yes. What is the name of your church? Amen. If somebody says to you what your church is all what is your church all about, what are we gonna say? Love the Lord, fight our enemies, and the disciples. That's what Jacob is gonna say. Amen. Because if we're not about that, you're wasting God's time. Amen. A few announcements. The first one is that the art sale is this Saturday. It has finally arrived. Now is the time to bring your stuff. Uh, and put it in the youth room, and we are going to have our yard sale this Saturday, 7 a.m. to noon. If you can come early and help get that, all that stuff outside, that would be of a great appreciation, if you could come early and help get that stuff outside. Uh, the yard sale this Saturday, so bring your stuff this week. The church picnic is this Sunday. Now, we're going to do this outside um, at Gilbert Run Park. Bring a dish to share, obviously. But Saifu is going to be there making his magic stuff. So uh, it's this, Saturday, uh, this Sunday at Gilbert Run Park after this service. Um, silent auction, Saturday, October 10th. The house next door had things in it uh, that we're not going to put in the yard sale, but instead there'll be a silent auction for our membership uh, and if we don't get rid of it, then, then it'll be in the next one, I guess. But all the proceeds are going to go to the upkeep of that house next door. Uh, and that is October 10th, 10 a.m. to 2. So there was a lot of interesting stuff in that house. We have it all, and we're going to do a silent auction for that. If you are hearing impaired and would like, we have a new hearing impaired system. If you're interested in that new hearing impaired system, you go ahead and sign up. Uh, we're going to do a training. It's real easy. You would get ear pods. You can get those for very cheap. You can even get them in the dollar store. And they plug in to those systems back there. So you would come in, you would take one of the units, plug in, or you can 
you can also use, if you have a smartphone, you can use your own smartphone as well. But I, maybe I'm making a general assumption that if you need hearing impaired, maybe you might uh, have a smartphone. But we have those things back there, so you could plug into that and you could hear everything that's going through uh, our microphone. So if you're interested in being trained on that, the sign-up sheet is back there. Also, our beloved Bev Lindy uh, has gone to heaven, and we rejoice that God uh, has her in his loving arms, but there is going to be a memorial uh, a funeral service this Saturday. Uh, the viewing is at 3, uh, the funeral is at 4, and there is a meal afterwards if you would like to attend. On the count of three, see, you know what I like about this? I didn't even tell Scott about this. Scott just told a story about how he's like the most wonderful Christian in the world. I mean, that's what you got from that story, right? Is that he is the most wonderful Christian on planet Earth. I mean, it's like Jesus, Scott. Uh, that's what I heard from it. Uh, well, from the puppet show, you're going to get a different impression. On the count of three, I want you to say, wake up, Tommy. One, two, three. is shockingly impressive. The rule, if you don't know, was I only let the kids scream for one breath. Maverick apparently can take an entire breath of a helium flight balloon inside of his lungs and can get it all out in one breath. Oh, sorry. Hello, Tommy. Howdy, howdy there, Tommy. Well, hello there, Pastor. How are you? Oh, I'm good there, Tommy. How are you? Well, Pastor, I've got to tell you, I'm not that good. Thank you very much. Oh, dear. You're supposed to say what happened. What happened? <laughs> well, I was lulled away from a perfectly good spot for me web by a web of lies spun by a deceiver. Oh, nice play on words there, Tommy. You see how I did that? I talked about me web and then spun it into a web of lies, I was told. A web of lies. Lies. Yes, I did see that. You're a regular wordsmith, but back to the point. What web of lies were you told that you got out of a good spot for your web? I was told a web of lies by Scott Wells. <laughs> Scott Wells? That's right. You heard me. Scott Wells. <laughs> oh, dear. What did Scott Wells do, Tommy? Well, Pastor, late Wednesday night, after Scott had skipped church for one of a number of sundry reasons, he snuck into your office and he sidled up to me web. He sidled? Indeed, he sighed up. Scott is notorious for sidling. Okie dokie. Anyway, Scott sidled up to me web and he began to tell me how much he missed me and missed my webs. He told me I could come back to the farm, smell the fresh open air, and well, I could be home again. Well, that sounds great, Tommy. That sounds just great. Well, I haven't finished the story yet, Pastor. Oh, sorry, go on. Well, I went back to the farm, and I set up my web in his garage. And then the very next day, do you want to know what Scott did? What did he do? He let all the chickens and the ducks out of their pen, and they went trampling through my web, Pastor. I barely made it out of their life. He didn't. Oh, he did. <laughs> and when he saw what happened to me web, he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, Well, it's good practice making webs there, Tommy. And he walked away. Well, I'll be. I know. Man, Scott had, you know, Scott does have amazing talents. He's a wonderful guitar player. He loves the Lord. He can grow a mean beard. I mean, really, can he grow a mean beard, folks? He sure he can. He can grow a mean beard. But perhaps Scott is a little weak on that whole compassion thing, huh? Well, I'd certainly say so. So needless to say, I'm back in me web in your office. Well, of course, you're welcome in my office. But you know what? This is actually a good lesson. A good lesson? Sure. The truth of the matter is that humanity, every one of us, Sometimes we fail on our promises, and well, that's why we need to trust in Jesus above any man, for he will ne Jesus will never let us down. And he won't cruelly tell me to come into him, to his barn, and then destroy me web like Scott did, right? <laughs> no, he won't. Well, on the last day, when Jesus comes back, your web actually is going to go away. But maybe there's a better web in heaven. Well, 
All righty then. I feel a little better now, Pastor. Let's pray. Amen. Say, dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For the promises of Jesus. For the promises of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. Spiders in heaven. That's right. <laughs> oh, God is good. All the time. Scott really is my friend, just so everybody knows, all right? <laughs> uh, I didn't ask if I was his friend, all right? I didn't ask that. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. You are a good, a holy, an awesome, and a gracious God. As always, I pray that this message is a message that you, God, have for your people. May the proud amongst us be humbled and the humble lifted up. In the name of Jesus, amen. I forgot to tell you guys, I uh, told 8.30, but I forgot to tell you at 11. The reason, and this is something we can praise God for, um, the reason that the doors are closed and the fans aren't going is because something happened this week. Uh, it was a wonderful thing, actually. Somebody donated uh, a large sum of money to outfit our HVAC units to draw, uh, uh, during service times, 100% outdoor air uh, in the uh, sanctuary. So you see all the, I don't know what to call them, so I'll just call them suctions and returns or whatever. So uh, you keep the fans on and it goes in, it, it exhausts out and outdoor air comes in. So it's like having the fans, but it's conditioned air. So we praise God for that. Amen. So the ventilation is very good uh, and we were able to make that change. So we praise God. Yes, yes. Amen. And the best part of it is it cost me nothing. Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> it costs, actually, that's true. It costs us nothing. Uh, somebody from outside the church donated that because, uh, you know, I'm good at complaining. Uh, all right. So what we've been doing on Sunday mornings is we're going through the book of Matthew verse by verse. And where we are in the book of Matthew is Matthew 24, beginning of verse 15. So please open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, beginning at 15. Matthew 24, beginning at 15. Where we are in this journey, Jesus is with his disciples and he's likening the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD to the signs of the end of the times. So in Matthew 24, that's what we're actually discussing. What are the signs of the end of the times and how can we perceive them? And really simply how we as Christians should be prepared beforehand. Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 15. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Hallelujah if you need a little bit more time. Hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Matthew 24, 15. Matthew 24, 15. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. Let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And last, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. We're going to highlight verse 15 to 28. All, uh, all of what I read is dependent upon this particular sign. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. Man, that sounds fancy. That sounds hard to understand. Uh, what does that even mean? All right, strap in. You can do this. We are going to talk about what that means, because everything that comes after the abomination that causes desolation is dependent on us knowing what that is. It even That parenthetical statement is not mine, that's Jesus. Let the reader understand, well, it might be Matthew uh, interpreting or editing, or Jesus said it himself, 
Let the reader understand. I think that's Matthew, now that I'm thinking about it. Matthew was saying, hey, guys, pay attention to what this is. All right? So we have to begin to interpret it. So let's just take it one step at a time. We can do this. Let's take the first word, abomination. What does the word abomination mean? Just the word itself. What is an abomination? <laughs> Something bad. It's definitely bad. You're absolutely right. Uh, not all sin is an abomination, but Jesus is highlighting something. It's not simply bad. It's not really bad. It's grotesque. It is the anti-God state. If God calls something an abomination, it is anathema. It not only goes against God, it goes against all that is good, all that is holy, all that is right. That's an abomination. If something is desolate, what does that mean? If it's desolate, empty, vacuous, no life. So desolation, to cause desolation, usually means there was life, then something caused a desolation, and now what? It is now void of life. So the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. All right, let's stop. What's interesting about this is this doesn't just have one fulfillment. And the reason that I know this is because the Jews at the time of Jesus, the prophet Daniel prophesied that there would be an abomination that causes desolation. Okay. The Jews at Jesus' time had already finger pointed what that was in their own history. The fact that Jesus uses the future tense as something's going to happen showcases that what they had pointed in their history as the abomination of desolation may have been one fulfillment, but it was a small one leading to a large one. Let me talk about what I meant. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah. All right, very good. Now keep your hand up if you have any idea what Han I'm not going to call on you, but be honest. If you could stand up here and explain what Hanukkah is all about. Yeah, you, that's only because you were here at 830. Uh, all right. So you're going to learn about Hanukkah today. All right. In the year 167 BC, there was a Greek uh, ruler, a pagan ruler by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes. And in 167 BC, this Greek ruler erected at the Jews' most holy place. What was the Jews' most holy place? The temple. He erected in the temple and outside the temple a humongous statue of Zeus. That is the left-hand side. And he dedicated the temple to Zeus. And he said that Yahweh is Zeus. And he committed the Jewish temple to Zeus. Idolatry, the worship of idols... God says consistently in the Bible is called what? An abomination. It got so bad that if you were a Jew, there were certain foods you could not eat. It made you unclean. What was the worst thing that you could eat? It became a symbol of what you weren't allowed to eat. A pig. So Antiochus Epiphanes took a pig on the altar of sacrifice and sacrificed pigs to Zeus in their temple. Now, this the Jews pointed to as the pr uh, prophetic fulfillment of the abomination that causes desolation. What had happened was the Maccabean Jews revolted against Antiochus Epiphanes, defeated them, they cleansed the temple, and rededicated the temple. Hanukkah! Uh, and that's what Hanukkah is all about. All right? That happened in 167 to 160 B.C. was the Maccabean Revolt. And they called this the abomination that causes desolation. So when Jesus is with his disciples and he speaks about the abomination that causes desolation as a future event, he's indicating that while this may have been one fulfillment of this prophecy, that one fulfillment was in a small location. This fulfillment is going to become what? Global. All right? But I do think that the first 
instance of this is instructive and important. Jesus is speaking of this in futuristic terms as if this abomination that causes desolation has not happened yet. Well, all right. So let's look back there. The abomination that caused desolation was an idol in God's temple claiming the name of God and yet being false and all of the sacrifices that are being done were false and idolatrous and a pagan ruler was in charge of the temple of God. All right, that's what was happening. Now, let's extrapolate this. The holy place for the Jew was the physical temple. What, according to the New Testament, is the temple of God? You, if you don't know this, you and us as a conglomerate are the temple of God. Do you know one of the things that irritated me most about the whole lockdown, uh, especially as it pertained to churches, was... The church has never been meant to be isolated from one another. The church has always been understood as a gathering of actual physical people. It's always been understood that way. So I am exceptionally glad that people uh, that are in dangerous situations are able to live stream. But I want to be very careful with my words here. Let's not pretend that live streaming is the same as being together. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say? Let's not pretend that that is. I understand why it needs to happen, but let's not pretend that it is. Because according to the Bible, we as a conglomerate, together, unified, together are the body of Jesus Christ. And we are the temple of God. Ephesians 2, for through him, this is the him here is Jesus, through Jesus, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, and whom the whole structure, that's everything together, being joined together, grows into a holy temple of the Lord. Iraqis, Saudi Arabians, Africans, United States, Mexicans, Brazilian Christians, Together are the temple of God. We are God's holy place, not this building. If we were outside underneath that tree, we together would be God's temple, his holy place. All right? But more than that, not more than that, but also you individually house the spirit of God. In the Jewish temple, the high priest was allowed in the Holy of Holies once a year. Because in the Holy of Holies dwelt the Spirit of God. He put his name there in a very unique place. You now, you as an individual, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Do you not know that you are God's temple? Look at that word. You are God's temple. That was a shocking statement in first century Palestine. You, God's Spirit dwells in you. If anyone, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. So what is the holy place for the Christian? The gathering. That's the holy place. The church. And by church, I don't mean structure. I mean us, the people of God. All right? That's the temple. So, if the abomination of desolation is an idol being set up in the temple of God. And the temple of God, according to the New Testament, is the church of God. The abomination would be some of the church itself claiming to still love Jesus, but in reality. So they look like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon. So what the abomination that causes desolation is, is simply the infiltration of idolatry and paganism into the gathering, into the church. It will make the church desolate. It won't be but the physical butts that are in pews will not actually be what? Christian. The structure of the church will become corrupt and anathema. It will become a very stench 
to the Almighty himself. That's that abomination. Here's just a couple of pictures to showcase how this is beginning to happen already right now. In the upper left corner, uh, from my perspective, well, from yours too because you're looking that way, on your, from your perspective on the right is a woman by the name of Nadia Bowles Weber. She is a very influential pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, the largest Lutheran denomination in the United States. To, uh, on our left is Gloria Steinem. Where they are is an event celebrating abortion. And what she has done uh, is Nadia Bowles Weber, this is what she did. She, do, raise your hand if you know what a purity ring is. Okay, what a purity ring is, is, uh, <clears throat> so a father typically, it could be a mother too, but typically a father, gives a ring to his daughter. And she, she puts the ring on either her wedding finger or the right ring finger. And what this purity ring is, is a pledge that the young lady makes that I will remain chaste until marriage. Sounds like a wonderful thing, doesn't it? And you can make that very special. Well, Nadia Bowles White told all the young ladies of the ELCA had this done to take off their purity rings, to mail them to her, and she will down, and she made a She gave that to Gloria Steinem in celebration of abortion. And she said that 